Huh, maybe this nozzle needs to be turned down a little bit. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right, boys. It's quite breezy today, but let's just take that nozzle down a notch. Hey everybody, I thought I would take you along, show you my delicate winter watering attempts. Hopefully not rotting anything out. It's quite breezy today, which is a good thing. But these Tolumnias have not had water for two days. And I know, I know you're probably thinking, yikes, she's gonna rot them out. Let me get that nozzle down a bit more. Just a teeny tiny more targeted. I hope I'm not moving too fast. Anyway, so after two days of no water, yes, I'm going a bit gung-ho. And I also wanted to show you the strategy behind what I'm doing <laughs> because it is quite a cool day. Again, not something that is ideal for watering the way I'm watering right now. I'm going to count on the fact that it's relatively, let's say, early enough, breezy enough, and they're in full sun as well to get them to dry out enough before they go on inside later on. And if I'm picking up any outside noise, it's because I'm on an open mic. So I do apologize for everything I can't edit out. It's just a quick spur of the moment. I thought, you know what? I keep talking about what I have to do, how I have to balance things out. And this is like today, it's about 14 degrees Celsius, which is not good for Tolumnias by any stretch of the imagination. Besides, I'm watering them like this. But you see, I've got them against the south facing trellis. And it is a beautiful sunny spot here. And it will stay sunny like this until I bring them inside. So I'm kind of gambling with the breeze, with the sun, that I've got maybe 18 degrees because they're getting a direct hit. That is the risk. So thank you for joining me. Let me just pan you around while I, with one hand, pump the spray up. <laughs> Meanwhile, we look at a great palm tree. <laughs> oh, it's been extremely cold here lately. So yes, this is fertilized water at 100 parts per million. Very, very weak. But also seeing as my cerola is in active growth, you can see there's a new growth. It's going to get at least 100 parts per million. Up here, I have my brassavolas. This is flagellaris right here. And if I'm not mistaken, we'll find out one day, hopefully, what that one is. It's supposed to be a perinii, but it is a rescue. So I don't know. Maybe one day it'll bloom for us. It came out of the dead brink of just a rhizome, went onto this. <laughs> inorganic mount, which has an extractor fan filter material on it that buffers sort of like sphagnum moss, holds nice with water. And well, look at it grow. This was the best needle that I got or leaf that I got in 2022. And full growth within the first year, little ones mind, but full growth within the first year of it being on this funky little mount. Maybe we'll get some blooms and figure out who it is. Okay, let me pan you around again and give you a bit of the vista once more. Let you have a look at cousin It. <laughs> He's doing great. Despite the cold, there's no need to put a shawl around him. He's loving it. Okay, let's walk around one more time to the inside here of the blooming alley. This is my Tolumnia hoxtonia and yeah. I know it's risky. So what I think I'm going to do is move her to the trellis out with the other Tolumnias so that she can get some sun and the breeze. There we go. I'm losing a little fan down here. And this is not looking too good in here either. There's one, sorry for my shadow. There you go. That one's not looking too good. My screen is extremely small, so I can't really see if everything is in focus. I hope so. And because today is really cool, I only have Dendrobium hibiki outside, the two pieces. But look at the new growth. They're doing okay. 
So they have their allocated position here because they can tolerate the cool temperatures a little bit more. Here's the other piece. There's a new growth, new growth peeking out over there. So after the divide, the radical repot, etc., they're doing all right considering the circumstances, but they can take the cold a little bit more. I also brought out my Lobata because I want to really cure this growth right here. It's, I just don't want to lose the progress because it's one of the biggest ones that I have grown since I got it as a seedling. You can see here, very, very small growth. This was last year's growth, which was already substantially bigger. And then here, look at that. Look at where that sheath is. And I would like to encourage it, although the leaf is cold, but here, right at the sun. I'm very afraid for my Luminosa right here. I've lost all the leaves in the back in the recent weeks when the light wasn't adequate. The growth of 2022 is holding on. The roots are also holding on, so eh, fingers crossed. And then today, the only thing I brought outside is Lelia purpuratas. They can take it a little bit colder as long as they get sun and the maxima as well oh you guys which is growing roots so more light keep the momentum going those roots are important as with any orchid then i wanted to show you something i'm already getting distracted i wanted to show you winter watering but anyway let's have a look at this i'm gonna take some pictures and insert them and show you my little coccinia that has bloomed out now the bloom isn't perfect but I have to say, and I'm very pleased to see this. I think it got uh, too cold one night for this one. Otherwise, I can't imagine maybe an insect or maybe bird poop. The acid of the bird poop got onto the bud. But still, there's that. I'm very pleased to see that that one's blooming. I have not seen such a tiny coccinia bloom, to be honest. So I'm kind of doubtful whether it is one. But I've checked on the Google and it would appear that, yes, it is a coccinia. I don't see any difference in the shape either maybe being a first bloom for such a weak orchid. Maybe we can expect more in the future. I know I still have to do a um, update on my Rapiculus Lelias, which are doing great. The Panaricas, it's kind of a bit too cold for them today, but I brought them out because they do get this gorgeous corner of sunshine here. And I thought I might as well risk it. Sorry for that background noise. I thought I might as well risk it seeing as the sun is on them for about three to four hours and it's nice it's not nice and warm, but it's nice for them to get the light. The growth is progressing beautifully. So I'm just trying to keep the momentum going. Anyway, back to watering. Let me scooch you out and go up to Victoria Regina. Now she could take more than 100 parts per million, but I'm not going to be doing the a la carte today. And so she's getting 100. It doesn't matter because in the past days she's been getting higher doses of fertilizer so one day with a little less it's not so bad yeah you can see i'm watering and the water is getting into that growth doesn't bother this orchid at all she is robust that way i know 100 parts per million on my polyanthem doesn't make sense because it's heading into dormancy still hasn't lost all the leaves but having said that Sometimes in nature, they also get a little bit from the dew and whatever they're hanging on, they also get some more fertilizer, whether they absorb it or not. 100 parts per million for an orchid that size is not a big deal. I'm not giving 100 parts per million to my Bensonie or to my Unicum, but to my Hawiara lava burst right here that I just recently cut the spike off. And you can see how liberal I'm being. Water is going everywhere. And once again, I'm only just banking on the fact that it's early enough in the day. She'll be fine. Eventually, the sun will get her directly. And if I'm not confident about that, then I move them onto the trellis where the flageralis is. And that's where they can dry out with the late afternoon sun. Here's my Dendromium maxilla it is in active growth. That is why 100 parts per million is going on here. I've already gone up to 200 with this one. But it's, yeah, again... It's not one of those nice, warm and toasty days. But she's doing fabulously. I'm so proud of this orchid, considering for the longest time, I wasn't entirely sure how she would fare. My wildcat up there has bloomed out. Now I have to refill my water. 
Then we'll go on to the Vandal Rack, but here is my fertilized water in a black bucket on a terracotta floor heating up in the sun. Heating is a bit exaggerated, I would say, but it's warmer than what it comes out of the faucet, so there's that. <laughs> my hands are cold, but when I put my hands in that bucket, they feel nice and warm. I usually put a jug of water into my Maxillaria tenuifolia the last two days when we've had some rain. I don't need to fill up that pot. It's been rained on, but a little bit of a foliar spray of 100 parts per million will do it some good. It's looking really nice. All the new growths have plumped up beautiful pseudobulbs. Just gorgeous, especially with the sun on it now. Kimmy always gets fertilizer. As you can see, full and active growth. Lots and lots of root growth. There's something I want to try and do today. Maybe I can get you on a small tripod because I want to be able to tuck this long root in, the one I'm spraying right now, the one that's going down, I want to be able to tuck that root in, into the saucer, which I also fill with a jug until it's full to the brim. Let me do that right now while we're at it. Let's not spill it. I think the moss takes up more than the orchid does. <laughs> it's like I'm feeding the beast that is the moss. <laughs> because that saucer does empty out very, very quickly. All right, let's go back to making sure all the roots darken up. That's what I plan to do here with this orchid every day. Well, except the last two days, because we had enough drizzle rain. She didn't need me to help her out. Now you see in the, how the back darkens. That is so important for me in the summer because that is my humidity buffer when it's very, very hot and dry here. Yes, and I bring that up because I cannot wait for the temperatures to warm up, especially since we are now in the middle of a 10-day phase of single digits at night. Again, sorry for the background noise and me pumping on my sprayer. Winter watering, after all. The King Yanum gets a little bit of a fertilizer spray over the leaves. I don't want to be wetting that pot too much. Same with my Dendrobium Berryoda keikis here. And they're in spike. Look at that. <laughs> Harvested last year, potted up, and in spike. So we've got the Cooksonianum looking lovely jubbly. We have some beautiful progress on those nubbins. And my No ID Nobly is just taking off as well. I have a feeling, oh look, one nubbin is opening up. Not just one, wait a second, slow down. There's one nubbin showing buds. There's another nubbin down there opening up as well. I was going to say that King Yanum is going to win the race, but no. Rainbow Forest. Yep. Despite the cold, straight in everywhere. Leaves, crowns, everything. Again, I am gambling with the breeze, the sunshine. But they haven't had water in two days either. There was no way I was bringing these outside while it was raining and 13 degrees Celsius and the nights dropping to six degrees. So I'm going to just bank on the fact that they're thirsty and they'll be wanting to drink and absorb all of this straight away. Now in ideal temperatures, there would be no need to worry about reducing fertilizer, etc., because these are continuous growers, but in my climate, they slow down to a grinding halt almost. They are not resting, but they do slow down considerably. That's my Neo Stylus Loose Sneery, the classic one. Also doing much better than last year because I've been mindful of the fact that the Rinko Stylus is the stronger parent and Rinko Stylus doesn't like cold. So I've not incurred any cold damage on it in the winter so far. I've been very mindful to bring it inside. And loose Neary Blue with its funkiness, hanging out, smelling beautifully. <laughs> now this one could take up to 200, 300 parts per million. You can see that the whole orchid is a bit robuster. It could take more. Oh, the moss looks really, really dry. Let's give that a little bit more of a spray. I need the moss for the summer, for the humidity. That's why I don't remove it. But you can see how dry it is after two days indoors. But again, I'm not doing a la carte today. It is what it is. 
whatever is in the spray bottle, whoever needs it, gets the amount. Everybody gets the same today. Before I spray my Ampoyathea down, I hope you can see that above the root, the next node up, we've got a spike forming. And in the opposite leaf joint is a second spike, which because I'm holding my sprayer at the moment, I can't show you, but yeah, she's on the move. Hoifect. And then here I have Renanthera citrina. And this is what I do. I hold my breath, close my eyes, sort of, but you know, the apprehension thing, hold your breath, close your eyes and go for it. They need the water. You can see they have more aerial roots than anything. I'm not guaranteed any roots in the pot there. So this is their second spray of the day because the Ampoyathea can take a little bit more cold temperatures. I bring her out, spray her down, let her dry out, and then I do it again. And then that's it for the rest of the day. The Renanthera citrina today has also had two sprays. Just because this west side here has a lot of sun, it's a bit more warmer than it is on other parts of the patio. Push comes to shove. If I'm not comfortable, once the stand here comes into sun, I move the pots to this stand and then they have sun until about 5, 5.30. On cold days like this, I very, very rarely leave my orchids outside beyond 5.30. Oh, sorry, I forgot to keep in mind the glare of the sun. And Chao Praia takes a whole spray can all for herself. Because we're in the blue, we're still fertilizing. My gray sprayer is plain water. Today, everybody is just getting fertilized. Chao Praia has had plenty of plain water over the past days. <laughs> still got the blooms. Surprise, surprise. Let me just show you my Ancelia Africanas up there. First day out after two days, they're pushing spikes. I would like to encourage that. They've got 300 parts per million in their reservoirs. The reservoirs are not full to capacity, but they need something because they're also growing roots, some of them. And well, if you're going to bring me spikes, I have to support that with fertilizer. The other two I brought outside that I think will need it are my Mimicophilas, which is the Thompsoniana here on the right, and the Tibicinus coming out over the top there. They haven't seen light for two days, so I figured up here they should be doing okay, at least for a couple of hours. It's better than nothing at all. Now, while I'm standing here in black sweater and black leggings and everything, I am cold. But I think that having had the sun on them, I think up there, despite the cool breeze, I think they'll be okay. I'm just going to have to watch out. I don't leave them out too long unless the wind slows down. Because the moment the wind stops, it is going to be feeling so much warmer. Stan the man also, I know he's big. You would think he can take more than 100 parts per million. Once again, we're not doing a la carte today. And it's okay because Stan the Man has stopped active growth. I don't see anything happening. The new growths are filling out. He has been inundated with plain water. I'm just going to give him 100 today. And if it stays dry the way it is at the moment and no more rain comes out of nowhere, then uh, tomorrow he'll get 300 parts per million. He is, after all, maturing new growths right there where I'm spraying. We can still push them, but for today, after his flush of the past two days, a hundred. Do a little check-in on the cymbidium buds. Looking nice. I'm not going to have the flower count that I am accustomed to, but hey, there'll be color here nonetheless. And my fire spike is progressing beautifully. That is looking really nice. I'm surprised it has continued with the cold temperatures, but not complaining. If it continues to grow like that during the cold temperatures, we may be in trouble because it may not develop completely, for lack of a better term, seeing as the cold temps can burn the tip. Anyway, this is Berry Oda. Opening blooms one after the other. Look at all these beautiful spikes, like grapes. Oh, it's a sea of spikes and buds. I love it. 
You know, I love it when the blooms open, but there's something so gorgeous in just this. Just this visual. All the spikes and like candelabras, the buds going upright. This is exactly, oh, I think it's so, so pretty. Nothing against blooms, but we'll go to the Maasai Red. Let me show you what I mean. Same thing. She is so difficult to photograph, this one. I'm hoping that with this camera I can show you. Look at those spikes. I mean, once again, nothing against the blooms, but the architecture and the structure of spikes and buds forming. There's nothing quite like it. Look at this. Look at that. And then you get multiples and how they work with each other. They play with each other. You know, they complement each other, the spikes. And then you can see some blooms opening in the background, giving another contrast. Oh, but I love the visual of these spikes. Also, because they're a different color, they're dark, like the Berioda, they're bur burgundy, wine red. These guys are dark, almost black. Only now are they coming around like a deep, deep wine red. Look at that. I know, I do geek out over the weirdest things, but this is how <sighs> you could preserve a spike. I would preserve these. They really live up to their name, Maasai Red. Proud, upright, in their red togas, holding their spears. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this little winter watering stint with me. Very impromptu, but after being cooped up for two days, it was nice to have you back on the patio. Have yourself a fabulous day. Thank you so very much for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed the stint with me. Ask me any questions if you're wondering and dubious about what I'm trying to achieve. Watering crowns during cold temperatures, if I didn't specify that clearly. Anything and everything. The comments are there for a reason. Use them, abuse them. Love hearing from you. Once again, have a beautiful day. On that one condition, though, that you please stay safe. Take care. Bye. Sound white boy.